Hey everyone, Steve Chase here. Thanks for joining me for another video. This week, we're gonna look at the bank feeds using QuickBooks Online. Okay, so first off, there are 16,000 banks and credit cards that you can connect to QuickBooks Online. Here, you'll see the major ones here, but there's, there's quite a bit that you can connect to. So we're gonna assume that you've already connected your accounts um, to QuickBooks Online. And you'll find them once you do that on the banking tab on the left. Okay, so the first things are, let's take a look at these tiles here. Here we can see a checking account, a savings account, MasterCard. I do recommend that when you set up your chart of accounts, you actually add the last four digits of the account so it's easier to tell which one's which. It makes it easy when you make transfers and so forth between the two. Um, okay. This number here that we see in the bottom right hand corner, that lets us know how many transactions have been downloaded since we last updated and are waiting for us to review. Okay, so for example, we have seven transactions waiting for us to review in the MasterCard. Now, to review, you can add, match, or exclude. Those are the three uh, types of actions that you can do. Add, match, or exclude. Here on the savings account, we have one transaction and on the checking account we have 25 okay so if you have a lot of activity every night it's going to be coming at you and so you want to be in here frequently and getting these numbers down and accurately record them okay just below um you'll see for review what's already been reviewed and what's been excluded okay so there's three tabs here for that scenario there Okay, and then um, lastly, the, the numbers in the tiles, the top number represents the, the online balance that you would get if you logged into your bank online. And the bottom number is what actually what's in the register in QuickBooks Online. So if you're ever running a balance sheet report, it is going to go by the number at the bottom here based on the date that you run it by. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do next, I'd like to just jump into the checking register. So if you click on the tile, we can click go to register. And I want to call your attention to this column right here is empty. And that means that all of these right here have been manually added to, to the register here. Okay. So in a moment when I go ahead and match my first transaction. I'm going to show you what happens when it tells you it's been included from a bank feed. Okay, we go back to banking. We're going to find one of 25, one transaction of 25 to match it. Okay, so here's a deposit rate 68.15 and it's saying match. Now before I match it, I'm going to click on this row and I can review the details by selecting deposit. This is a link, and this means that this is a transaction that's already been recorded in my QuickBooks Online. Okay, so here I can see the deposit at 868.15, and that's a combination of multiple customer payments that we see here, all combining to do that. So I'm gonna close out of here. I'm gonna validate that that's correct. I'm gonna select match. Okay, now let's go to the register and show you that there is a green icon that comes in. It also has the letter C, that means it's been temporary cleared. So those are coming in tentatively cleared, reconciled status. But that's, that's the idea right here. So you have this green icon here. That means that it's, it's been matched or added manually from the bank feeds. So once you get everything up to base, you're going to have a lot of those. There should be more of those than there are empty ones here. Okay. Now, one of the great things about using the bank feeds is often, like for example, in a MasterCard, if you were, let's say, traveling and you bought something, you don't necessarily have to go and add it to the register first and match it. You can just simply add it uh, to the register. So, uh, for example, on this Laura's Lamentation here, $150. What I would do is I'd click, I'd, I'd discover what the vendor or the bank detail is. I'll copy that and paste it. Okay, do an add 
and I'll set up the vendor here. If I wanted to add details, I could here, but that's good for right now. Then I'll make the category here advertising. I could add a note if I wanted to. And once I'm done with that, I'll click add. Mind you, I could have taken a photograph with my receipt, my, the receipt, emailed it to receipts at quickbooks.com, and I would have found that receipt here in the receipts area waiting for me to review and match up with those pre already uh, added transactions to the register. So this is, a, this is a great new feature. I recommend that way you can marry the receipts to those transactions on your credit card or check accounts and so forth. Okay, so let me go to the uh, MasterCard register to show you what just happened here. You'll see that $150 charge for 11.11.19 has come through and I see it the green icon right there. So that's coming through automatically reconciled here. Now, if I click on reconcile, I'm just gonna kind of pass through here. Okay, you'll have to watch another video of mine that talks more in depth of reconciliation, but I just wanna kind of give you a, a general gist of the nature here. So let's get our bank statement out. Enter the ending balance date that it ends, hit start reconciling. The, the idea that I wanna show you here is that for everything that's been added from the bank feeds, it will come in self-checked. So just notice, let me go ahead and sort these by just, uh, excuse me, charges. There we go. So this is the idea is if you've, did your job with the bank feeds, everything's correct and you're adding in here. When you get into here, often you'll land yourself up at a zero here, which is um, after you re review all the charges and payments for a credit card, they match your bank statement. That's when you would reconcile. Since I'm not at a zero right now, I'd have to go in manually, look at the bank statement and check each one as I'm doing that. And my goal would be to get this down to a zero as you're doing it. So I'm just gonna save this for later. Go back to the bank feeds here. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> this one right here, this 1,200, notice it says add. Okay, we have a hunch, su suspicion that we've already added it to the register. So if we were to click on it, and you think that you wrote a check to A1 rentals for this backhoe rental here, we can attempt to find a match. So if you're doing um, a lot of cleanup and maybe you're doing over six months of data cleanup and sometimes it won't automatically find a match for older transactions. So by clicking on the find match option, it will um, bring up a screen that will attempt to find the match. And if that was the case here, you could go through here. Often it'll be self-checked, but you would, you know, for example, if this was 120 right here, you would check that. And whenever the difference is at zero, then you'd be good to go here. Okay, we don't have that scenario in this scenario in this case here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one real quick. I'm just gonna do a real quick check here. Write a check. I'm gonna do a quick add here, A1 rentals. Of the checking account for equipment rental, 1200. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit save and close. And the idea here is I'd like to, to try to match that right now. So um, it still is not picking up on the match. So let me click on this. I think it's a, probably a date issue. I, I post dated it here. So find match. And I would like this one here to be matched up here. So at that case, here's the correct one. I'm going to hit save. And that will come off the list here just to verify it. I'll go to register. And here it is here. Now, if I made a, a mistake and I matched it to the incorrect one, later we decided it should have been matched up. I can 
do a couple things. One, I can go up and edit the transaction and I can learn how it came in up here. There's a link here and I can click the unmatch command. I also can delete the transaction from the register and it will automatically go back into the bank feeds or I can go to the bank feeds here and select the reviewed and I can come over here and click the undo button. And what will happen here is I hit the undo, it is going to uh, pop back into the bank feeds for me to review and then take action for that uh, um, another time here. All right, so using the bank feeds uh, does take a little bit of time learning, but you'll find that there's a surprising amount of free time you're gonna save after you get the gist of it. Uh, think of the old school way of bookkeeping. You used to have to enter the dates and the vendors and the dollar amounts. And now that job is really helping us out with these auto classifications on, on and set up with the bank feeds here. So um, I would encourage you to test out this on a sample company. If you go Google QBO uh, test drive, you can open up the sample company file that I'm in right here and take a look around and, and explore the bank feeds. Thanks for watching.